taking a look at this pre-produced video from Yole. This is the journey of their barge, the rocket ship, as it makes its way from Decatur, Alabama, down to Florida. The red dot on the map there on the far left side of the screen, of course, that is Decatur just south of the Tennessee-Alabama state line. Just a little bit to the east across the Tennessee River from Huntsville, Alabama, known as the Rocket City. Home of the Marshall Space Flight Center, important NASA installation where a lot of engineering work is done and where they manage good bit of the science that's conducted on board the International Space Station happens up at Marshall. It's also where Blue Origin has their engine manufacturing facility for the BE-4s and where they have a space on a previously used historic test stand from NASA to test the BE-4 engines, which of course are used not only for the Vulcan rocket, but also for Blue Origin's new Glenn. of course a time lapse from the rocket ship as it makes its way up here and that we're entering into Decatur or into Cape Canaveral Taking a look here now at the path, presumably out to Vandenberg Space Force Base up in California. Quite a longer jaunt. One of the things that Tori Bruno mentioned during his pre-launch press conference regarding the Vulcan Cert 2 mission is in addition to their upcoming additional vessel which will be called the called the spaceship which will join the rocket ship which you're seeing here being offloaded at Vandenberg they're also exploring having an airship of some sort which of course would allow for a much more direct path from Decatur and the Huntsville region of Alabama out to either the Cape or Vandenberg Part of the infrastructure investment that ULA has made into its Vulcan rockets, both at the Cape and Vandenberg, that road and the wharf there, they've put in a good bit of money at that site. In total, they've invested about a billion dollars or a little bit less than that into infrastructure improvements, both in Florida and in California, to support Vulcan rockets from east and west coast launches 
Taking a look at the wide shot here, it's a gorgeous 20 miles offshore, but they continue to be low enough topped that we're not expecting any significant launch weather concerns, though as we continue to push into the window, they will approach the coast. Generally, we when we did get within 10 nautical miles, which is that white circle that we look at, we have to see them get a little colder tops, a little taller tops, usually about in the 15, maybe 20,000 foot range. And right now they're kind of below that, so not continuing to be a launch weather concern. So if we go to our forecast, still looking pretty similar for what we were seeing earlier this morning. Overall probability of violations, very low, 5%. Continuing with our breezy easterly winds with temperatures in the low 80s and no significant launch weather concerns. Back to you, Andrea. And good news on a weather. We remain in the hold as we continue towards liftoff. In a few moments, launch conductor Dylan Rice will pull the launch team for the final go to pick up the count. 29 engineers and managers are pulled for system status and readiness to proceed. This is the final status check for all Vulcan vehicle systems, ground systems, and the U.S. Space Force Eastern Range. The vehicle system readiness pull includes electrical systems, hydraulics, pneumatics, propulsion systems, flight control, and propellants. Let's listen in as Dylan Rice performs the final pulling. Status check to proceed with terminal count, Vulcan systems, propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LNG. Go. LO2. Go. Water. Go. Centaur systems, propulsion. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. LH2. Go. Has gas. Go. Electrical systems, airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. GCQ. Go. Off support. Go. Tom. Go. Umbilicals. Go. ECS. Go. Red line monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Op safety manager. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Equal system engineer. Go. Anomaly chief. Go. Range coordinator. Go. Launch director. You have permission to launch. Proceeding with the count. ALC, verify T0 is set for 1125000 Zulu. Verified. ABE, issue MRTU sync pulse. Roger. Secure transmittery battery heater and transfer battery internal. Pulling is complete and the team is go for launch. From T minus seven minutes until liftoff, you're, you'll hear Dylan Rice and the team performing the final. Once again, we are about to step into the terminal account for the Vulcan CERT-2 mission. It's the point at which the T-minus clock and the L-minus clock will line up in sync with one another. And then we will step into the final seven minutes of the countdown. For those who may not have been with us, the last go-round we had this, we got down to one minute and 51 seconds when an issue cropped up. The hold was called and they recycled, worked through whatever came up. They didn't really provide much information uh, outwardly on that, but they are now in a good position to proceed with the terminal account. And we're looking forward to picking up the terminal account in five seconds. Three, two, one, mark. Five. Ground pyro is enabled. The countdown clock now picked up again. We are just about six and a half minutes away from the liftoff of Vulcan on its first daytime flight. 
in the early morning hours here on Florida's Space Coast. Later in 2025, we'll start to see Vulcan rockets be able to be launched from Slick 3 over at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Currently, teams are working to finish converting that pad from an Atlas configuration to a Vulcan only launch pad. ECS, reduce ECS for launch. Roger. T minus one, one minute. minute. Rock, report range status. Range green. Forty-five. Vulcan tanks at step three. Thirty. EE four start box go. Twenty-eight. Verify ECS reduced for launch. Verified. Status check. Go Vulcan. Go Centaur. Go Cert two. Here we go. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, BE4 ignition, 2, 1, and liftoff of Vulcan Cert 2. For the second time and for the first time under the light of the rising sun, Vulcan has lifted off from Slick 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. All temperatures and pressures look good. Vehicle has begun its mission for program. Body rates continue to look nominal, trending towards zero. Standing by for SRB jettison. According to the timeline, it should have happened by now. Uh, BE4 is now throttling down. And we There's have SRB separation jettison. of those SRBs a little bit later than according to the planned timeline. Vulcan is 19 miles in altitude. We just heard confirmation of solid rock. Still tracking the progress of the Vulcan rocket there. You can see the blue glow from the liquefied natural gas, the methane.
next step we're anticipating here on the timeline is booster engine cutoff just before the five minute mark into flight. Excellent work from our tracking team this morning. Continue to have two good engines. Body rate's trending towards zero. And we're now about one minute to nominal ego. Vulcan is now one quarter of its liftoff weight. And Vulcan is now passing the Carmen line. Vulcan now in space. We're about 30 seconds away from booster engine cutoff or BECO. And we've started boost phase chill down on the second stage engine. And the BE4s are throttling to maintain a constant acceleration. And we've concluded our boost phase chill now. And PU has gone to open loop. And we have Eco booster engine cutoff. And we have Vulcan Centaur separation. And pre start on LH2 and LO2. And we have full thrust on the RL10. And bearing jettison has been indicated. And we've begun thermal loop conditioning on the RCS. And fixed angles on Centaur PU. Vehicle is now 123 miles in altitude, 345 miles downrange, and traveling at 10,000 miles per hour. And we're getting indications that booster performance was within expectations. RL10 continues to perform nominally. And we are partway through a 10 and a half minute burn. This is Vulcan Mission Control at T plus much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Andrea. I think we're all really excited that we just saw Vulcan launch for the second time. I know um, a lot is going on with us this morning, but why don't you tell me what's going through your head right now? Sure, so I think uh, it was a beautiful liftoff this morning. I think we're all really excited to see that. Um, it's such a significant launch in terms of our certification and you know where we're going with Vulcan. So it was a, just a tremendous accomplishment from this team. I'm really proud to be part of the team that did this. Um, not just the ULA team, but also our Space Force partners, our suppliers across the country. Um, so many people put in so much hard work, so much effort, so much dedication into this, and it's, a, it's an amazing thing to see this morning. You never think about it, but there's so many different parts that go into a successful, mm -hmm. you know, even just getting off the pad. Absolutely, launch. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so why don't you tell us a little bit about the countdown? Sure, so it was a fairly quiet count to begin with. Um, 
we did, the team did have to work through a couple of items um, kind of at the end, um, which is why we have a, a window that we worked into. So um, the team is very experienced, um, the launch ops team here, the engineering team in Denver, very experienced and really able to, they have a good understanding of the vehicle systems, the ground systems, and we're able to kind of disposition those items and, and move forward. And we worked a little bit into that window and then got a nice uh, sunrise launch. So it was really, really beautiful. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate seeing the sunrise, no. <laughs> not at all. That's nice. So we've talked a lot during the broadcast about how this is really important for certification, this launch today, and our government customers. Why don't And we'll continue listening on the background for updated information about the 